Travis Wingood. So, uh, as you know, because of the church's eternal hatred towards me for being a translator back in 1998, okay. uh, I've been now currently cast into the uh, shelter here in Utah as I'm here indefinitely. Uh, I have a counterclaim that because of the criminal accusations that are involved, I'm waiting on the U.S. Attorney General to finish his investigation, which is going on for five months now. <clears throat> and as you can see, I'm wearing the same shirt day after day now. I used to have gray shirts, but as uh, I tried to figure out how to clean myself, that obviously failed, and now I'm in a worse condition than when I started, because people do not want me to improve my life and get out of here and make a life for myself. I'm being perpetually kept here. <clears throat> and the it's called a resource center but there's no resources as I've told you they purposely have taken out what resources they originally had in the beginning they used to have a computer lab computers are kind of essential in our day and time as I'm able to communicate with you through computers with the internet service you're able to do documents and email them. You're able to communicate with governments and housing and jobs so that uh, we can improve ourselves and get out of here. And all of that is gone. <clears throat> and they have no intention of giving it back so that we can get out of here. They're purposely making and keeping people homeless now. That is their government policy here in Utah. And they do have bathrooms. It's about uh, 20 stalls, as I said, I think 21 technically. And then urinals, which are around 10. But uh, 300 plus guys. Uh, the code for shelters uh, says they need a lot more and obviously you need to have a cleaning crew to clean these on a regular basis yesterday there was no cleaning crew for the bathrooms there was one guy who did a surface cleaning of the toilets and provided toilet paper later in the evening that was it for yesterday on Sunday uh, yeah, that is unacceptable right. for a public building because right, so the shelter sure. is it's not a private building if it's a private building there, there's some deep problems that people need to scream about as uh, you know anyway I mean it is owned and operated by a board which the church is involved with as I've told you, they purposely planned all this for me. <clears throat> but we're not allowed to have this as our residence. This is not our home. This is only supposed to be a resource center where we come here, we get the resources we need to get out. And like I said, the resources are gone. And this is not a home. They will not let us keep things here. If you have a shopping cart of stuff as you see many homeless people do you're not allowed in the shelter you have to sacrifice your possessions in order to come to the shelter to get the resources you need and leave <laughs> you have to lose your resources to get resources that they approve of and they don't even have those resources that they would approve of and so you see they're creating a catch-22 for us. Creating a catch-22. There is no actual catch-22. They create it because they're the government. 
and it creates a hardship for us. We are tortured. We have cruel and unusual punishments for being homeless. It's a crime to be homeless in Utah. <clears throat> and this atrocity and inhumane treatment of us uh, keeps us from improving our lives and at least having a basic decency. And so, uh, as religious folks as they claim they are, and we all know which religion they belong to, you'd think that they would do better for us. Even Gail Miller, who's been on the forefront of in creating all of this for everybody, as she got the woman's shelter named after her. And they've now boarded up, kicked out all of the people who were residing next door to us. And uh, they're going to be tearing down those buildings and building the new places, which we are all under the knowledge that they're going to make it even more strict for us. They've created prisons. And it's not humane prisons. Because even the Salt Lake County Jail, if you remember, I filed a petition for a redress of grievances in 2008 with the state. And instead, they chose to treat me as a terrorist so that they can justify locking me up indefinitely. So while I was there, <clears throat> I got to see the conditions. And the ACLU has had to step in to help improve the conditions in the jail. But nonetheless, the jail itself treats people better than how we are treated here in the shelter. And unfortunately, the ACLU is not interested at this time in pursuing this, though they've got my complaints on file. Because there's more atrocities that are going on here for those who are physically disabled. <clears throat> and so, we know the scriptures. You're supposed to take care of the poor. You're not supposed to just feed them fish. You're supposed to lift them out of poverty to be equal in society. And when you have a monetary economy, that's impossible. It can't be done. Because everybody is forced to fend for themselves as a survival of the fittest. They need money for their survival, and they don't get enough to give to others. And so, there's some interesting doctrinal precepts that are valid and good within the Book of Mormon, despite it not being literal history. And the first one is in Mosiah chapter 4. And it says, And if ye judge the man who putteth up his petition to you, for your substance that he perish not and condemn him how much more just will be your condemnation for withholding your substance which doth not belong to you but to God now this is a different economy <coughs> because everything that we have everything that you see behind you came from the earth that's what it's referring to by God. And, and so the economy that we're using, which is monetary, you have big business guys who own the land, develop the land, and take the resources from the land to provide us with what we have. And they pay employees, a minimum so that they're slave labor but uh, they themselves as the owners get to live a lavish lifestyle off of slave labor so yeah we haven't gotten rid of slavery in America it still exists it's just in a different form so that people don't recognize it you know Superman put on his glasses so we can't identify him as Superman 
That's exactly this what happened. <clears throat> and and so yeah, there are people who abuse this system, who've made it a life to be professional homeless people. They don't live on the streets though, they actually have a home and their job is panhandling. But uh, they are doing so well that they're able to afford their own home to live in. And so they kind of hurt the rest of us because the news and police warn people about the the people who are doing it for a living and telling the people not to give to the real homeless and so you see the signs of do not give to the homeless no loitering in our business area etc and and yet you don't understand that this shelter as a resource center is causing us to perish. Uh, we had another person who was taken to the hospital again yesterday because this building isn't sufficient to care for us. And there have been others who have died here. And uh, yeah, there's there's no medical staff. You know, we have to. The, they have to because we can't they have to call the, the EMTs which I see on a regular daily basis coming here them and the police this place does not because it, it's not a home it's not a it's only a resource center and so they're justified in not taking care of us and they end up condemning us they victim blame us you know why haven't you gotten out of this place? Don't. How's your home coming? You looking for a place to live yet? You know, they blame us for our condition that was caused by our government allowing businesses to destroy our economy. <clears throat> we are condemned for being poor that they created for us. And they are not providing us the resources to get out. So yeah, they are actually the ones who should be condemned but who's standing up for us ACLU won't do it the next one is in Alma chapter 5 yea and will you persist in turning your backs upon the poor and the needy and in withholding your substance from them this is what destroyed Sodom it's in Ezekiel 17 uh, um, do a search for it here. As I'm battling the sun. I'll follow the sun. 16. 17 is the parable of the Messiah for the latter days. And I think it's around the 50s. Bruce R. McConkie didn't do a verse by verse thing like he did in the Doctrine and Covenants. Uh, harlots burning mother sister Samaria Sodom and her daughters behold this is the iniquity of thy sister Sodom verse 49 pride that's a my will thing fullness of bread they're prosperous an abundance of idleness was in her so you can see they did their will they're filthy rich with plenty of food because agriculture in those days that's a main staple everybody needs to obtain food and when you have a, a monetary system where people buy your food as the farmer you're the big plantation owner with the food and you hire slaves and pay them minimum so that you keep them as slaves rather than them going and doing their own thing with their own business <clears throat> and then you create idleness like I said slaves provide the lavish lifestyle for the owners and thus they get lazy they're not workers 
and as a result did not strengthen the hand of the poor and needy and I took them away as I saw good so no homosexuality in here guys it's neglecting the poor that societies are destroyed for and in this particular case they're referring to fire from heaven that destroyed Sodom but time and time again as real history has shown us the 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 kingdoms all fell because they neglected the poor and the poor got to such a numerous amount that they overthrew the governments the economy collapses when you don't have enough slave labor and, uh, and so on the various reasons consequences of creating a slave labor force to create the division economic division of rich and poor and so yes America is collapsing we are on the brink of destruction because we have allowed big business to be filthy rich and that creates a greater gap between those who are poor the working force and yeah we all know where it came from the Reagan era trickle-down economics which yeah businesses chose not to trickle it down they hoarded it for themselves and the government didn't step in to stop it you know Reagan made it happen and businesses took advantage of it and did not help society and not a single president fix the problem and so now we're about to be destroyed as uh, they, they've as we've witnessed when people are hurting financially they tend to embrace authoritarian government leaders that's disturbing what the hell are you guys thinking because they are the ones who end up destroying our government and uh, that hurts everybody and people don't realize it because we don't learn from history so. and if you're wondering I should do that for you priestcraft <coughs> second Nephi 26 after talking about the definition of priestcraft that they don't take care of their membership right Mormons no my bishop has several people that are yeah right but you have to pay tithing you have to have a job there are restrictions it's supposed to be temporary so if your bishop is constantly giving to those in need he's sort of going against the grain and if it were to be found out he'd get in trouble <laughs> and so here's the the line in verse 31 the laborer in Zion shall labor for Zion for if they labor for money they shall perish and this refers to the business owners as well and notice it's the laborer everybody are laborers there are no business owners in Zion every laborer is in and of themselves a business owner but it's not for money it's for the rest of the people it's not for the corporation of Zion it's for the people and so each person labors to give to others and so you don't just make food for yourself you make food for yourself and for others you don't make clothing just for yourself you make clothing for yourself and for others that's what it's referring to here and so the law of consecration in the Mormon church is number five law yeah you're slaves to the church they've turned Zion into the corporation the business entity and you are their slave labor force 
you do not own anything. That's the difference. But if you're not going to accept that the church is the great and abominable church as prophesied in the Book of Mormon, you're living in your own little private Idaho. See, for me, I, I love Idaho. That's where I get it from. And as a in uh, fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade, because Mrs. Fiskin gave me an F on my report on Idaho. <coughs> I, we were to choose a state other than California to do our report on. I chose Idaho. Nobody knew Idaho existed. <laughs> and so thus, my own private Idaho. Everybody has their own understanding of Idaho. So regular people don't even know what Idaho is, and so... They have no interest in Idaho. So, anyway. <laughs>